Hey everybody, my name is Jessica Shore. I am the clinical social worker and center coordinator at the UNC Movement Disorder Center, the Parkinson's Foundation Center of Excellence here in North Carolina. First of all, big thank you goes out to the Parkinson Association, the Carolinas, for asking me to be here with you today. And then of course, thank you to all of you out there who I can't see, but I'm just gonna trust that you're there for being with me today and for being open to learning and moving and supporting the Parkinson Association of the Carolinas and supporting your Parkinson's community. I've been asked to talk about caregiving. Um, as you know, or can at least imagine, this is quite a loaded topic and there are many different aspects about caregiving that I can talk about, especially the implications of the coronavirus crisis on, on Parkinson's caregiving. I could probably talk about all that for hours, but I'm not gonna take hours, I promise. But I do wanna acknowledge that this is a rough time for a lot of people, or even if not rough, kind of just, kind of just a strange time. There's a lot to feel, there's a lot to wrap your head around. Living with Parkinson's or being a Parkinson's care partner uh, involves enough uncertainty and enough adaptation on its own, but now you have to live in a global pandemic on top of that. Um, so that's a lot. And because of that, a lot of people are feeling a little bit in limbo right now, a little bit more vulnerable on many levels. And so I just want that uh, to be something that we acknowledge as we delve into this. I'm also learning that for many Parkinson's care partners, it is even easier to not give attention to your own health and well-being right now. So that is why we wanted to take this time to focus on, on that. But before we continue, I actually want to take a few minutes to bring us in to this moment, into the space and time, wherever you are right now, whatever you might have going on in your life or that you need to do when you stop watching this. Um, I want to share with you a quick grounding practice that I personally really like. It's called different things, but I tend to call it the five senses exercise. So, We'll just do it together, okay? So make sure first that you are having a comfort, you are in a comfortable seated position or standing, whatever, whatever's comfortable for you. But just make sure that you're cozy and hopefully you are since you're, you know, watching this. I want you to be comfortable. So just take a second to check in with your surroundings, check in with how you feel in your body. Maybe take a couple of deep breaths just to bring some energy inward. So with this exercise, I'm actually gonna do it out loud for myself with my own experience right now, just in order to provide you all examples. But of course, when you practice it, whether you're practicing it now or you're gonna try it out later, of course, do these from your own experience. Um, I'm gonna say them out loud now so that you can hear it as examples, but for yourself, you can say it out loud or you can choose to kind of say it to yourself in your own head. So five senses ex exercise. Um, first, what you do is you name five things that you can see around you. So again, examples for myself, my laptop in front of me, crayons that my kid left on the dining room table, my empty water glass, a candle over there on the counter, and the chandelier that's sort of in front of me right now. And then you name four things that you can feel. So again, examples for me, my glasses touching the bridge of my nose, my left foot kind of lightly touching the floor, the seat below me, and how my shirt is feeling touching my arms. And then you say three things that you can hear. So for me, it'd be birds chirping outside my window, the sound of the fan overhead, and my dog snoring lightly in the other room. And then you name two things that you can smell. 
Sometimes this is a little bit of a tricky one, especially if you don't have a great sense of smell, but kind of just go with it. So let's see, for me, I can smell a little bit of my hand lotion that I put on before, and I can still smell the coffee coming from the kitchen that my husband made earlier. And then you name one thing that you can taste, which also can be a little bit of a tricky one, but let's see, for me, I can still kind of taste the toothpaste in my mouth from before. A lot of care partners share with me that they wish they could live more in the moment or they, they wish they could be more patient with themselves or with their loved ones. And when they can't do these things, they feel guilty sometimes or they feel like they're not being supportive enough or strong enough for their partner. Being present is a, is a huge challenge. Um, stopping yourself from kind of ruminating on all the what ifs or what we have to do or what could happen. Um, just all of that stuff inside of your head is really tough and it's okay to acknowledge that that's tough. Being patient all the time is also very challenging. Many of us seem to have this idea in our heads that all other people are better at patients than us, that we are the only caregivers or parents or partners that can kind of snap or lose it sometimes. But that's why I really like the five senses activity and wanted to practice with you with it today. It's, I think it's a really nice exercise to use whenever you feel like you don't need two minutes to ground yourself, perhaps because you feel out of control, or you just need to regroup before reapproaching a situation more patiently or with a clearer head, or you just want to take a few moments to pull yourself into the present, into what is real around you without any judgment. So that is why we did that. And thank you so much for practicing that with me. When people talk about caregiving or present about it, often it's about self-care. And understandably, it, it needs to be addressed in a personal way. The messages around taking time for yourself in order to avoid burnout are incredibly important. But I also find sometimes that the concept of self-care can be a little intangible. Um, it also means different things for different people. So in planning for this today, I thought I would kind of specifically focus on one area of self-care, which is the idea of care partner strength. Because I feel that recognizing and supporting your own strengths is really a cornerstone to taking care of yourself, especially in these times. As you all know, out there living with it every day, generally Parkinson's care partners have a lot to cope with. Uh, managing new responsibilities, day-to-day -day logistics, some things to keep up with, all kinds of emotions. It can be really hard to make space for processing feelings or taking time for yourself if you're just doing what you need to do in order to get through the day. And additionally, sometimes care partners will share with me that they can't really stop to focus on their own needs, their own well-being because they have to be strong, uh, that they can't let anything happen to them because if something happened to them, then where would the person with Parkinson's be? And that's kind of a fear that lives with a lot of them much of the time. And usually when they talk about that, they are talking about physically, you know, physical strength or um, what if something were to physically happen to them? But I think it also speaks to emotional well-being as well. And then, of course, we have to acknowledge that it's not uncommon for people with Parkinson's to tell me that they feel like they struggle with strength. When you experience muscle rigidity, when you move differently in your body, when you aren't as physically active as you want to be or used to be, or just can happen with normal aging, People with Parkinson's as well as many other people can feel like they're weaker than they used to be, which is really hard. Additionally, we know that anxiety, depression, stress,
can actually worsen Parkinson's symptoms. I'm especially hearing about that a lot right now. Um, and that can kind of make the sense of weakness or vulnerability even stronger. But that being said, we kind of live in a society that tends to stigmatize these feelings or having mood challenges. We really uh, put the idea of strength on a pedestal. Um, for some reason, our society kind of looks at um, the, the concept of experiencing depression or anxiety or um, you know, other mood or coping challenges as weaknesses, when in reality, they're just a normal part of being human. And because of that, it kind of leads itself to people not wanting to admit them to themselves, share them with others, or accept or seek help. So often people will minimize their feelings or they'll feel shame or guilt because of these feelings. And I know that's a little bit of a soapbox, but I share that to say that personally, I've always kind of felt the opposite. I've always felt like when someone is self-aware enough of their feelings and can allow space for attending to their feelings, bringing in supports, they should be proud of that. I think it takes a lot of guts to allow yourself to feel vulnerability in any way. So try to give yourself permission to feel whatever you're going to feel without self-judgment. Name it. Normalize it. I know that that is easier said than done, but I think it's a really nice thing to intentionally practice. Often we think about strength as doing everything right um, or being able to do it all on our own without needing to rely on anybody else. And you know, like I do, that that's not always sustainable. Um, there is a social worker and a researcher out of Houston named Brene Brown, who you may be familiar with. And she has a quote that I really like that says, somehow we've come to equate success with not needing anyone. Many of us are willing to extend a helping hand, but we're very reluctant to reach out to help when we need it ourselves. It's as if we've divided the world into those who offer help and those who need help. And the truth is that we are both. So I share that to say that we can, you can uh, both recognize your own strengths, your accomplishments, and the ways that you are self-sufficient and still be open to and even lifted up by the support and assistance of others. That asking for help, accepting help that's offered doesn't take away from your strengths. And again, I know that that's easier said than done, but sometimes I think that it's just okay to acknowledge that and maybe even say it out loud for ourselves and try and practice that in order to incorporate that perspective. But along those lines of other people, I think it's an incredibly important time right now to intentionally stay connected with others, even if they can't help you out in the ways that you or they would want or need uh, through stay-at-home measures, through social distancing recommendations, I've had a number of Parkinson's families share with me that while they're quite connected with people through the phone or through virtual meeting options like virtual support groups, virtual exercise classes, it doesn't quite feel the same. And just that sense can feel a little bit isolating. We really benefit as humans from having people around us, from drawing on their strengths and supports. So make sure you keep checking in on yourself with that. If you're perhaps needing to back away a bit at different points from virtual meetings, if you're experiencing kind of virtual burnout, or if you're craving more connections, how can you get more creative with new ways to do that? This Move It Parkinson Walk uh, is a great example. I think it's really empowering to know that you're part of this larger community, that you are not alone in this and that you are connected. 
even though people are not, might not be sitting right next to you. Also regarding strength, uh, care partners often frequently share with me that they get this message, you are so strong. And it's true, you are very strong. And that being said, I have had a number of care partners over the years share with me that while they appreciate that message, it's well-intentioned and it can be uplifting and they might even be like, yeah, I'm strong. Sometimes it can also feel like they don't really know what that means for themselves um, or it reminds them that they wish they could be stronger in different ways. So I share that to say, I think it's really good to take time to reflect on what strength means to us individually what we value that speaks to our strengths. We don't often give ourselves enough credit for our own resilience, our ability to figure things out, to navigate tough, unexpected roads, and to learn and grow from our experiences. But you all are doing that every day. So perhaps if we spend a bit of time talking about strength or reflecting on our own strengths, um, maybe reframing our concept of it in some ways or you know naming our strengths even in times of feeling vulnerable perhaps we can empower ourselves a little bit better self-advocacy and empowerment are incredible tools for self-care so that's why it's really important to take a moment once in a while to recognize and name your own strengths a question I have asked a number of times in my support groups over the years is, what is a skill or a strength that you possess that you bring to this experience and that has helped you navigate challenges that have come up with Parkinson's disease? Or what is a skill or a strength that you've developed through and gained through this experience? And honestly, when I ask that, I often hear crickets. People have to put a lot of thought into that. It's kind of a loaded question. And I, I also think that too often we're not really taught to recognize our own strengths. Um, and in fact, most people are a lot better at being critics or pointing out their own weaknesses than they are pointing out their own strengths. Care partners especially are usually so focused on the person that they're caring with or for that it can be hard to turn the attention on themselves. But maybe try that once in a while. Ask yourself, what do I do well? How am I impressed with myself? And even write it down because writing it down is a really nice visual reminder and also a really nice way of getting it from in here to in front of you. Something that you can refer back to, especially in times of, you know, where you're particularly struggling in any way or feeling vulnerable or feeling down. I'll tell you um, some strengths that I often see in my Parkinson's care partners. I usually see great dedication, determination, an impressive ability to organize and plan and stay on top of all the things, the ability to adapt to unexpected situations, taking on new roles, seeing the humor in a situation, becoming their own expert in Parkinson's disease. So maybe as I name those a little bit more specifically than just saying you are strong, do any of those resonate with you? And I hope that they do for you to say, you know what, I am really good at that. You can also ask yourself, what have I learned from other times of challenge or uncertainty that I can draw on now or going forward? Because I think that when you're conscious of your strengths and what you bring to the table, you can harness them and you can apply them when you're approaching new situations. Hopefully it can also show you some opportunities for certain areas that you'd like to work on or goals that you have for yourself. Perhaps it's practicing more 
self-kindness, um, trying to move more, literally exercising more. If you don't feel, if you feel as a care partner, like so much of your time is getting the person is spent on getting the person with Parkinson's to move and to exercise, sometimes care partners can forget about doing that themselves. Uh, getting enough sleep at night, is that something that you're really good at or is that something where you're like, yeah, I could work on that a little bit right now. Spending more time on gratitude, that comes up a lot from my families that I work with as well. It's possible for all of us to grow in how we approach life's experiences and challenges, but I think we first need to take time to reflect on that, our strengths and our goals in order to take those steps. You can also write down what inspires you, what gives you strength and hope that you can draw on. Being open to reflecting on your experiences, adapting to challenges as they arise, Again, feeling whatever you're going to feel and allowing that to be okay. Caring for yourself while caring for someone else, whatever that means for you. All of that shows incredible bravery and tenacity and resilience. So keep reminding yourself of that or ask someone else to remind you of that. Keep checking in with yourself, asking, how am I doing? How am I feeling? What is something I want to work on? What is something that I do really well or that I'm proud of? There is obviously way more that I can talk about related to Parkinson's caregiving or even self-care or strengths finding, but I think you have stared at a screen and heard my voice for long enough. But before I wrap up, I just want to say, or at least point out, by being here today, by showing up, you are being strong. By showing up for your loved ones or your partner with Parkinson's, you are being strong. And by showing up for yourself, you're being strong. So that being said, thank you again for spending this time with me today and for showing up uh, for yourself for the Parkinson Association of the Carolinas and for people with Parkinson's disease. And I hope that you have a great rest of your move it walk and that you keep staying safe. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh wait, before I forget, I had to ask my two-year-old son who was currently napping if he could draw you all a picture um, as inspiration for your walk. And uh, th that's, what, that's what we came up with. Although in the course of it, he also asked me to draw a heart, a car, and a flower. So here's your, here's your strength for my toddler today. Okay, that's it. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much.